welcome to this edition of Racing News. In the show this week, Vijay Maharaj of the Rising Sun showed us how it's to be done when 12 to 15,000 people poured into Gravel Racecourse on Saturday the 9th of June. But first, we visited South African champion jockey Anthony Del Pesh and caught up with several of our other top jocks sidelined by a recent spate of injuries. Race riding can best be described as an extreme sport. It's exciting, thrilling and adrenaline pumping, but does come with its inevitable risks and dangers. It's not surprising that the lives of jockeys are filled with ups and downs, particularly with so much that can go wrong in race riding. And unfortunately, this is something that a few of our top jockeys have experienced recently. We caught up with a few of them to find out how they're doing. Having suffered a severe fall on the 8th of April on Classic Day at Turfentine, Anthony Delpesh continues to make steady recovery from his surgery to repair a disc herniation and damage to his spinal cord. They cut me from my throat and went in this way. I had to move my esophagus to the side and, and went in this way. I'm not too sure what those little brackets, it's like two little brackets and one was a little plate that they had to put in. The biggest problem at the moment is my nerves in my, uh, I lost all the strength in my hand and I've got nerve pains running down my arms and into my hands. From one hand was only, I could only squeeze three cages and six and now I'm up 31 and 28 so I've made a big improvement. I've got much stronger and, I, and uh, the pain has, has got much better. Are you trying to keep fit all the while as well? Yeah, well I can't really do too much exercising but I do walk every day um, to keep fit and uh, Obviously in my arms, I, I'm doing uh, uh, dumbbells to just keep my strength there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you can't put any strain on your neck, so um, I'm trying not to make sure that heals properly. What's the prognosis of your injury? Well, yesterday uh, I went to have an x-ray and uh, it's healing very well. I'm going back in six weeks time to, to he wants to see me in six weeks time. It's, it's, it's quite a complicated thing. Uh, he, he, the doctor wants to make sure that I'm 100% I'm uh, strong enough in my neck to be able to, to ride because if I did have a fall again on it, um, what would be uh, the problem? So uh, I think you've just got to take it time at, uh, at, time at a time and, and, and see how it goes. And, you know, I'm going to be off for six months. That, that's, I'm not allowed to ride for six months because he, you know, you, you, it's the injury like this, they can't afford to make a mistake. And yeah, I think it's, I've got to play it by time and, and see what happens. And you know, let's, let's hope I can get back uh, to riding. We all want that, Anthony. We all want to see you back. But how are you doing in yourself as well? Yeah, it's very difficult, you know, and uh, boredom is uh, so used to every day working and now you can't really do much so boredom is getting to me and a lot of things go through your mind and obviously I've got a lot going through my mind and wondering will I be back to riding and yeah it's it's very difficult but I've uh, I just got to take it one day at a time. Yeah. Do you try and keep yourself mentally strong though? Yeah I have to and uh, you know um, I, I was thinking of going to see a sports psychologist yeah. you know because you know it's 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 that's all I've known is is racing and uh, since I was 15 years old so it's difficult to think of doing anything else except riding and and I was at the top of my game when when I was injured I mean I was way ahead in the championship and I won the previous year so everything was going very well it's not like it's a time I want to call it the day so I'm 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 praying and I'm hoping that I can get back into the saddle well, we're also hoping and praying for you. There would be nothing better to see you back at the track and on a horse and winning races. Thank you very much. From one top jockey to another, Anton Marcus was dislodged from a fractious white river in the parade ring ahead of the Daisy Guineas on May the 2nd. He fractured his wrist, but you can't keep a good man down and he was back race riding at Scottsville yesterday. Although not fully healed, Anton has been booked to ride Do It Again in the Vodacom Durban July. Good news for all Gunter Roggerman fans is that he's out of his two-week medically induced coma and making progress. Roggerman suffered a serious fall at Turfentine on Sunday the 3rd of June, having just won the Grade 1 Daily News 2000 aboard Surcharge the day before at Gravel.
We wish him and his family well. Gavin Lorena suffered a concussion as well as a broken right cavicle and scapula as a result of a fall in the listed Derby trial at Turfentine on Saturday the 31st of March. He underwent surgery the next day and has been out of action since. It's been a long road. Um, obviously I'm very happy to, to have my life and to be walking and talking and, and to be with my family. Yes. Um, it was quite a hard fall. You know, the clavicle is still not healing well. I've been to several doctors and, uh, you know, looking, looking forward, uh, hopefully another two months at Toyoa. What therapy are you undergoing at the moment to help that uh, process and help the healing? Um, I've been doing half the hyperbaric chamber and uh, I spoke to a doctor on Monday. He said I've got an upper two, two hour sessions a day. So I've started that again and um, I've got, I've got in touch uh, with the machine. It's an ultrasound bone healing system. Yes. And it's, it's apparently meant to, to help your bones heal up to 38% quicker. You know, to be out the limelight, uh, you've forgotten very quickly, but uh, I'm very lucky I've got a, a strong family bond. You know, obviously your, your phone doesn't ring as often when you're not in the limelight, but uh, I must say I've got a couple of close friends that have always kept in contact with me and a couple of close trainers that are my friends that have, that have kept in touch. Well, you're not forgotten, Gavin, and we want to see you back in the saddle as soon as possible, so our wishes are with you. Thank you very much, Michelle. But there's also much to celebrate. Six-time champion jockey Pierre Stradum is back from a fall in which a stirrup iron broke shortly after the start at the Vaal in May. Does it take quite a lot of courage and strength to deal with that and get over it and back in the saddle again? You actually almost have to kid yourself. Um, I've, I've had many falls and I've, I've had uh, times where I've come back and, and your first uh, week or two or three, um, you know, you, you worry about uh, what could happen, what could go wrong. As a jockey, uh, we, we frequently uh, get injured. I mean, we obviously ride horses uh, that sometimes are uh, intractable, and obviously we're racing uh, a very, very tight, bunched up uh, at a fast speed, and things happen very quickly. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a regular thing. We, we know it's going to happen, and you just hope it doesn't happen. When you're younger, you get jockeys taking uh, gaps that aren't there, or uh, they haven't uh, fallen or they haven't realized or what could go wrong. Uh, as you get older with experience, you are wiser. Having been out of action for a month, he showed he's not lost his touch by winning his first race back. There are so many jockeys injured and off at the moment. It's just opened up a gap for me. So it hasn't changed my riding at all. It's just um, opportunities have been, uh, been very few. Ian Sturgeon underwent surgery to his hip joints some nine months ago as a result of wear and tear. Was this wear and tear as a result of the sport? For sure. I mean, I don't do anything else. Um, so so for, for the last, I've been riding in races since 2001. And uh, yeah, it's just wear and tear, lots of riding. How common is this amongst jockeys? Um, I believe it's quite common. Obviously we're at a bit of an awkward angle and um, Stuart Randolph's just come back uh, last year from something similar and uh, yeah he's flying so it's it's something that you know can be fixed um, but I'd say yeah I'd say probably a lot of jockeys are, have, have got it and are just riding through it with painkillers now. Like Anton Marcus, Sturgeon was back in action at Scottsville yesterday. From one display of courage and tenacity to another the race to the South African Jockey Championship could see the first apprentice since Michael Roberts to take the title. Undercover agent though, with a wing on every hoof, gonna do it. Undercover agent from Snowdance. Sail south and Captain America. Lyle Hewitson, who won his first grade one aboard Undercover Agent, is as at the 17th of June, currently on 164 wins, 28 ahead of injured Anthony Delpesh and 35 ahead of Muzi Yeni. With just five weeks to go until the end of the season, Hewitson looks to have a healthy advantage. He was recently in the news when rewriting the record books. On March the 6th, he registered his 285th win of his career,
beating the record set by Gavin Lorena in 2007 and previously held for almost 40 years by Michael Roberts. And the good news doesn't end just there. Exciting news is that former champion apprentice Callan Murray and Sunmet winning jockey Grant Van will be leaving shortly after the Vodacom Durban July to ride in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong Jockey Club has granted them licenses for seven months, commencing on July the 16th. The contracts will run up until the 17th of February 2019. And someone who has dreams to follow in their footsteps is new kid on the block, Luke Ferraris. He's finding his feet very quickly, having chalked up 14 wins since making his first race course appearance in December last year. But perhaps the most inspiring story of all belongs to Jeff Lloyd, who at 56 will be back from Australia to partner Made to Conquer in the Vodacom Durban July. Having survived a stroke back in 2013 and told he would never ride again, Jeff Lloyd proved all wrong. He found a new lease on life and apart from being one of South Africa's top jockeys, he's become a champion in Australia as well. South African sportsmen are known for their competitive spirit and tenacity the world over. And our jockeys are no different. Their ability to overcome even the most extreme challenges is what makes them the sought-after athletes they are. The Rising Sun Race Day is one of the most festive during champion season. Humanitarian, activist and the man at the helm of the Chatsworth-based newspaper Vijay Maharaj is the driving force behind it all. The chief executive of Rising Sun, Vijay Maharaj. Vijay, fantastic day. Absolutely. I'm blown away myself. The kind of crowds that came out here to support us today is amazing. Uh, I think thanks to the beautiful weather and that allowed so many people to come out. And yes, it's such a beautiful day considering we have in entertainment, we have a mix of people from all works of life, and it's absolutely amazing. Everybody stops to chat to you, is this normal? Uh, it's normal in the sense that I think people appreciate the fact that we're able to entertain them for a day, they have a family outing. You know, I'm glad that you know, we put in a lot of work for a race day of this nature and people appreciate it and, and you know, that brings joy to my heart. Having a wonderful time, I love it here, it's great atmosphere, great people, ladies dressed beautifully, different colours, it's vibrant, I love it. It's been absolutely amazing, we just enjoyed and like taking in the atmosphere, the cultures, the different people and just enjoying everything that there is to offer. This place is just wonderful, the people are just amazing, the fashion is great and the, the atmosphere is just wonderful. Being just three weeks before the Vodacom Durban July, the cup trial is often crunch time for those wanting to make the final cut of 18. The winner is usually, but not always, guaranteed a place in that final field. And African Night Sky takes them on. Platinum Prince, but be with Africa. Night Sky out the top draw. Justin coming into the straight, he was at the back of the field, but showed amazing acceleration. Yes, look, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a smart individual, and uh, in this sort of race, he's, he's very well weighted, and uh, obviously the July will be a, a big difference. It's going to be a very competitive, tough, rough race, and let's hope we can make up the ground. He, uh, but he showed today that if he does find himself in a little bit of trouble, he, he, can, kick, he can turn it on. So... Uh, uh, you know, everything's going well, he's in a good space, he's got to go so easy with him now. You know, I was 50-50 on running him, I hope we just didn't do too much today. Um, we'll go very easy now into the, the Vodacom Durban July and, uh, you know, he, he'll be one of the horses to beat, make no mistake. 
see you were very quick to get him off the track here today. Yes, you know, it's, it's, it, there's a lot going on. You know, all this is, you know, the horses run to a point where they're tired and uh, you want the recovery like any sportsman you see nowadays how uh, uh, the post race is just as important as the pre-race. So we need to get him back, get the heart rate down as fast as possible because his recovery will be better. So as in front here, his heart's still going. And at the end of the day, this is not the race that he's here for. He's here for the Vodacom Durban July. So I need him to, to recover as quickly as possible and uh, get ready for that uh, big event. The unsettled for a stride. <laughs> Gates are open. Gate a, 13 of the best and sprinter mile fillies lined up in the grade to two Tibashina stakes. The secret is out. Star Express is now lunging late. The secret is out. Just gonna last from Star Express and Nick. Vaughan, she's matured beautifully and trained on so well as she's got older. Yeah, Michelle, she, you know, she hasn't had a really busy um, um, uh, life at racing. She's had, I think it's only her 12th start. So, you know, she's had a few suspensions along the way, which have taken care of, of a lot of her racing. But um, sadly, this will be her last season and she'll be going to stud. But, um, Good luck to, to Garth and to, to Basil, and she's going to be very, very uh, valuable at stud. Yeah. Well, she's a beautifully bred filly. Yeah, no, she is. You, that, that family is possibly the best in the stud book at the moment, so, you know, it's, it's very well done to them. And a special win for you, Vaughan. Yeah, well, you know, the season started off very quietly, and uh, we've just come, uh, come along the, the slowly, and uh, things have turned, and, and looks good for us, yeah. Well, wonderful, wonderful to be a part of it and share it with you. Thanks very much, Michelle. Thank you. We are sure to see many of these fillies again in the Grade 1 Garden Province Stakes on the 7th of July. This year, the Rising Sun Gold Challenge over a mile stripped down to just eight runners. But what it lacked in numbers, it made up for in class. It proved to be a fascinating contest between the precocious three-year-olds and the older stars of our tracks. Undercover agent and snow dance. Undercover agent though, with a wing on every hoof, gonna do it. Undercover agent from snow dance. Brett, wonderful win from a really talented horse. Um, Michelle, no doubt, he's always shown us that he's, he's a special horse from a young, from when he came into training. Um, you know, he took a bit of time to find his feet but uh, he proved in Cape Town winning the sales race just where he was going and um, you know his runs here have been remarkable I mean he won the Burley Turk in fine style and you know the, the night he got beat here it was first time under lights and I just think inexperience on his behalf he like I say he's still learning and um, you know he really did it today because trust me to get past uh, Captain and Sail South is no mean feat they're two hard knocking um, campaigners and um, just very pleased for, for Greg and for Brom. He seems quite a spirited horse, but is this normal for a colt at this age? Yeah, look, he, he is, he's strong, um, you know, he takes a lot of work, he's, he's only going to get stronger, so he's a horse that has to be managed very well. You know, he, he's got, he hasn't got a mean bone in his body, he's, he just knows his strength and it's just something we have to look after. Brahm, congratulations, that was an awesome win, your fourth grade won in six months. You're unbelievable, yeah, no, nobody more surprised than the striker. <laughs> What emotion was going through you? Yeah, you know, I mean, first of all, I must say, you know, I'm very sad about Greg Boards that's not well at this point in time. So, you know, my first objective and my best wish will be for Greg to be, get better soon. You know, these things are lovely and it's nice, but, you know, Greg's well-being is not negotiable, you know, but lovely to win it. And for me and Greg, that's Greg's first group one, lovely partner to have. Just a massive, massive privilege to be part of this. The food hall was buzzing with literally every delicacy under the sun. It's been spectacular so far. I mean, the crowd is great. The fashion show is fantastic. And as long as the crowd is here and as long as the stalls are busy and people are buying food, we're happy. You can see uh, but the amount of people. It says how good the gold circle and uh, they, they, they cater so well for the people. And the vibe in here with all the people oh, is absolutely fantastic. This is the place where you'd want to be. <laughs> yes. Thank you to those wonderful people, all our community, all those old, old age people that came out, senior citizens, thank you for supporting our day. 
and last but not least to the sponsors. They always put on a fantastic day. Well, then all the sponsors today, fantastic job. And for Rising Sun, they do a fantastic job. And, you know, I think it's a lesson to all of us that it can be done if, we, if your hearts are artists. The Rising Sun is fantastic to have a crowd here. Well done, guys. Well, thanks to you, VJ. It's been an awesome day. We've loved being here, chatting to everybody. So well done. Thank you. And thank you to management and staff of Gold Circle for being with us and supporting us over the past 15 years. Whilst attention was at Gravel, those Vodacom Durban July hopefuls up north lined up in the Grade 3 Jubilee Handicap on June the 10th at Turfentine. Social order in between them, Tilbury Fort, Yakin, social order, Yakin digs deep, Yakin or Tilbury Fort, it's very close. It's the Mike de Kock trained Yakin came away with a win with Sean Terry's race, Tilbury Fort in second. Abashiri also stretched his legs earlier in the day. Over 1,400 metres and a distance short of his best, he clearly looked fit and well. With the announcement of the final field and barrier draw this Tuesday the 26th, there's much excitement and nervous energy as to who and who won't make the final field. That's it for this week's show. We'll see you all again in a fortnight when we bring you the excitement and news from the Vodacom Durban July. Race... <laughs> <laughs>